Welcome to Furious and Loud, and today we're driving Gas Monkey Garages Season 1 Shop Trunk. Yeah! <laughs> Back in 2012, Discovery Channel commissioned a new show about cars called Fast and Loud. Some guy called Richard Rawlins and his mechanic, Aaron Kaufman. Who are they? To kick the show off, they needed a shop truck, and Aaron Kaufman, who you have probably heard of, had one of these at home. This was his dad's truck for a long time, and so the title was actually in Aaron Kaufman's dad's name. Aaron bought it and then modified it, and then Richard Rawlins bought it off him for the show. And this is the truck. This was on season one, episode one, in the workshop at Gas Monkey Garage. Right, it's really cold, it's about to rain, so I'm gonna get in the car and show you from inside and take it for a drive. But first of all, have a look at this. Now, not much security on the front of uh, an American truck from the 60s. This is no tired farm truck with a wheezing inline six or a tired out old V8. This has had the proper Aaron Kaufman treatment. This here is a five litre Ford V8 from a Fox body Mustang. So it's giving out significantly more power. And of course it will have been tuned, although it's actually really hard to find out the exact specs because it's completely modified. So I don't really know what kind of power it's putting out. Because this would be pretty much undrivable with this much power in a 1967 F100, Aaron made a few other changes as well. Looking down but through the engine bay, you can see a slightly more modern looking steering uh, column going down to a slightly more modern looking front cross member. Because the entire front clip underneath this engine is out of a 1999 Ford Crown Victoria. You know, the famous uh, police cars, taxi cabs, it's an iconic car, it's one of my favourite cars actually. It's got the Crown Vic steering, it's got the Crown Vic independent front coil suspension, it's got Crown Vic disc brakes, um, so it actually stops and steers and rides properly. Looking around the engine bay, we've got a few more little Kaufman touches. The um, fuel filter has got a Budweiser can around it. The uh, overflow is in some kind of drinks bottle. I can't tell what it is because that's not one we sell over here. You've got a brake bias control on the brake. So if you want to set up for burnouts all day, you can just set up for braking only on the front and just peel those back wheels out all day long. It's still got the original FOMO Co uh, windscreen washer bag, which is a mad thing when you see on American cars. And look at this big old intake, made in USA, Evansville, Indiana. Being a modern engine, it's running off an ECU as well for reliability and power. Uh, it's the Ford ECU, probably off the uh, Fox body that uh, donated the engine as well. It's not changed a lot since 1967 inside, apart from upholstery, steering wheel, aircon, radio, dashboard, headliner. Um, other than that, it's completely stock. It's still very much a 1960s Ford F100 when you sit in here uh, in terms of the driving position, but you're very upright and there's not a lot of room between you and the steering wheel. And the accelerator is way over to the right by the transmission tunnel and the brake is kind of offset to the right as well. And there is of course a foot operated park brake and hand release which never work on these things. Everyone just ignores them. And of course we've got a column shift. Right, it's miserable out there. Let's go for a drive. I genuinely didn't mean to spin the wheels just then. It was uh, just more power and less traction than I was expecting. This thing just really just takes off. It's so light. They could be a little bit wary because the brakes are less powerful than the uh, engine. I imagine that every time Aaron Kaufman or Richard Rawlins drove this thing, they weren't leaving carefully. God, there's a heck of a blind spot from that B pillar. Now I'm moving, let's talk you through the interior of this thing. These seats are just incredible. It's snakeskin retrim on this stuff, so it's uh, got a real texture to it, and definitely not one for the vegans among you. And it's got the matching dark tan leather, which is really soft and supple, very nice indeed. And I've done the same thing on the dash top up here as well, which looks and feels really nice. And the dashboard, the instruments, fairly basic. Over there, you've got a big metal glove box designed to take your kneecaps off. I can't quite reach it, it's too far away. Uh, there is a lap belt that's been retrofitted, so I'm wearing that. In the middle, there's a modern Kenwood stereo. I don't know if that came in on this side of the Atlantic or the other. And ashtray here, which is ideal for your sweet wrappers. The instrument cluster is as basic as it comes. You've got a fuel gauge on the left, 
you've got this speedo which goes up to 100 i've no idea what the top speed on this car now would be and you've got a temperature gauge and you've got an odometer sort of saying it's done 94,000 miles on a couple of indicator warning lights of course the thing is because this big dash top protruding so far forward i cannot see anything apart from the bottom of the numbers so i know that the fuel gauge is roughly somewhere in the middle it's a bit cold and we're doing a speed ending in zero so i'll just drive carefully i suppose apart from this uh, ignition key there are only four controls down here a pull toggle for the lights the lights are on it's pretty dark and dismal the wipers you turn them for wipers which thankfully work and i think you pull it for pull it or push it for washers i don't know right now got a choke but that's redundant these days because it's efi and a demist function but that also is redundant because we've now got the aftermarket vintage air air conditioner and heater sat in the cabin so in living in texas where gas monkey is you would absolutely have that as an essential more than anything else in the car the steering wheel is just madly up in your face it's like sitting here like like a clown driving a funny car a bear in a clown car kind of position to drive this thing indicators are on the left hand stalk like um modern cars of course nothing else on there because the headlamp dip is down there on your by your left foot where the clutch might have been changing gear though is on the tree it's up here you've got you know park reverse neutral then into drive and uh, this has got three-speed auto with overdrive it's a ford unit i believe apparently though if you are doing it at a comfortable speed knock it up one little notch there you go it drops into fourth or overdrive so you can cruise a bit more quietly and a bit more economically well, to be honest the wind noise off this thing is so extreme that you can barely hear the engine anyway now let's get to the seating position it's awful <laughs> it's absolutely terrible i'm pushed so far forward by the seat back that my teeth are virtually in the wheel um, it's about the right length for my my feet on the pedals as long as i bend my knee quite a lot the seat is actually really comfortable it's really nicely padded and soft and and lovely but you know it's it's just in the wrong place i could do the moving it moves back at all don't think it does one quite nice thing about this truck and its big wide bench seat from a youtube uh, videographer's point of view is that when i want to go and reach the camera i can just pull over and slide across the bench and see behind the camera what it's up to which is really handy not particularly a common thing that people are going to want to do but as niche problems go it's, it's good you do feel very high up in here because well you are and the bonnet is just vast uh, it just goes on and on over there somewhere and on british roads it does feel quite big but because it's so square you know exactly where the corners are the truck bed behind you is also absolutely vast this truck actually belongs to wayne of stone cold classics and it's kind of a shop truck i guess it would be for sale if someone made a good enough offer it's not actually for sale at the moment because he quite likes it and the story of how it came to be here in england is well the, the whole backstory of this truck this truck was aaron Kaufman's dad's truck his own personal daily drive in in texas and then aaron bought it off him at some point and being aaron he he changed everything so it's got the the crown vic front clip it's got the five liter ford mustang engine under the back it's got a year 2000 f100 rear axle so it's got the newer diff it's got disc brakes still got uh, leaf spring suspension though so it's still a little bit basic but you know it's an f100 that's what it's going to be oh roundabout this could easily go sideways here <laughs> i could easily fall out the window <laughs> that's quite fun this thing sounds good yeah discovery came a call in and they needed a shop truck for gas monkey garage where the first series of fast and loud happened and so this became this had those little sign written things put on this on the doors and this became the gas monkey shop truck so this is in season one episode one you can see this on the show as the gas monkey truck which aaron had built but later on in the in the seasons um, this car was bought by big chris chris smith who's a british car buyer who was over there and he drag raced richard rawlings for the opportunity to buy this truck obviously he won because he bought it and then brought it back and it rolled on a couple of years 
he used it for a couple of European tours, drove it all through Europe, obviously around the lakes and things. I think that's probably on TV as well somewhere if you look around. Then Stone Cold had a Camaro, and Chris is a big muscle car guy, and he wanted the Camaro, so a deal was done, and Wayne bought this truck. Of course, coming from Texas, where they don't have rain or salt on the roads, it wasn't particularly well rust protected, and so it wasn't looking too clever underneath. So Stone Cold have now taken care of all the extensive rust that was underneath the car and made it a good, solid, UK-friendly driver. And it is a really good driver. But if I put my foot down right now, listen to that V8 roar or chug. This thing is just epic. And normally when I do these videos, I like to give you lots of accurate specs and information. But unfortunately, because this is a complete custom, I really can't. All I can tell you is it's much faster and handles much better and even stops better than it would have done back in 1967. And that when it was a new truck, it was kind of a bronzy gold colour. You can still see that in the, um, in the load bed. But it was painted this kind of beigey tan colour at some point quite a long time ago. And now it is obviously starting to peel off. It's now been re-lacquered so that the finish that's on it now, including the Gas Monkey logos, are protected for the future. What I can tell you for sure though, is that to replace it would be really hard. Well, at least really expensive. Because an F100 isn't particularly expensive. You can pick up a, an F100 in this kind of condition for, I don't know, five, six thousand pounds. You could engine swap and suspension shop one of these relatively cheaply as well, either DIY or through like a, a UK based uh, hot rod shop, someone like Valley Gas or Burnham Autos would do it for you, no problem, and it wouldn't be tremendously expensive either because it's mostly bolt together pieces, it's big Meccano. The problem is the heritage, the fact that this car was on TV, it was in Fast and Loud, and it was built by Aaron Kaufman. So to do a, a copy of it, a replacement for it, would have to be either rebuilt on this truck chassis or rebuilt in another truck in that workshop by that man. And uh, for an insurance quotation, the owner Wayne did actually speak to Big Chris who spoke to Richard Rawlins and basically quoted him $75,000 for a replacement if you were to, to bend or break this one. So uh, I'm just gonna back off a little bit now. I'm gonna slow down. Okay, the indicators don't self-cancel, that's worth remembering. What a sound! This thing's just epic. I could drive this all day. it's quite hard to drive an American car in the, on a British road and to be honest it's not that difficult really you just keep your wits about you and be aware of how big the vehicle is this feels really different from a, a, an original unmodified 67 F100 because it doesn't feel lighter it's still a heavy old truck but it's, and it's still really really light in the rear but it does have just so much more go, you stab the throttle and that engine roars, it's wonderful. I'm just turning around in a pub car park where I once accidentally did a donut in a Mercedes S600 Grossa because it was covered, everywhere was covered in snow and the front brakes were binding and the rear brakes weren't that good. And as I turned in and just turned the wheel, the thing just did a complete donut. It was huge fun. Let's go not to 60-ing. That sounds good. People think American cars are really rare in the UK, but there's actually a huge American car community over here literally thousands of them. You just don't tend to see them so much because people don't really take them out when the weather's terrible. They're just either too valuable, too nice. 
too powerful and rear wheel drive and a bit light on the rear end, like this thing would be. Whilst I do enjoy driving an electric car because the just instant surge of power and you know all the, the fact that you're not making pollution using oil and stuff, nothing can replace the noise of a V8. It really can't. I wish these wipers were A, fitted with an intermittent, and B, not quite so far away. Well, my one big takeaway from all of this today, apart from the fact I want to go and watch some more fast and loud, is that I want a pickup truck, and I'm going to have to stick a decent V8 in it. Oh, like I need more cars in my life. So my shopping list for cars is now Austin 7, Ford Crown Victoria, pickup truck, and the other two dozen which are oh, were already on there. The way this thing rides with the Crown Vic front clip, it's got so much more control than it would have done on the original ancient prehistoric uh, pickup truck suspension setup. It actually turns into corners quite nicely and grips really well. And having the Crown Vic steering means it's actually really accurate. There's absolutely zero play in it at all. It's really quite nice. Right, everything's going towards the motorway. I can take the fast day road and do you another acceleration run without me screaming this time. Don't you dare pull out in front of me. I'm gonna demolish you. Right, let's go. This thing sounds awesome. One of these things. I want to go and buy a Fox Body Mustang as well. Oh, there's too many cars I want now with V8s in them. I should probably finish building my own V8, really, shouldn't I? Then I'd have a V8. I'm an idiot. Don't buy more cars. Fix the ones you've got. There's a lesson in life which none of us listen to. At <laughs> least of all me, the person giving it. I've no idea what economy this thing gets. There's not a lot of bodywork, so it's not shifting a great deal of weight, really. It, it feels big and heavy, but I'm sure, in, in car terms, it's probably not really. Up into overdrive, there we go. And relax. It's still quite loud. The headroom in here is just ridiculous. Uh, it's been relined in like a black, kind of hard body material. And you have got, what do you call them, uh, sun, has got sun visors as well on both sides. And the elbow room is designed for big people. You can quite happily sit three abreast in here, no problem. And the transmission tunnel is really low and flat, so you could have um, a third person sitting there fairly comfortably. And they would be enjoying the full effect of the aircon right in the middle there. Oh, I sat at this junction for ages. Right, gonna go. I forgot to mention about the cab, it's got an opening rear window as well, a slide side by side so you can get some fresh air through, or if you've got long loads in the cab for some reason, or a dog you want to put either side of the glass and have access to, you can do that. The wheels on this are from a Mustang as well, I'm not sure if they're Mustang original fitment of a later car, or if they're aftermarket Mustangs, but it did come off a Mustang apparently. feel good on the road it's not like mega fast but it feels rapid and the pickup's good and you've got such great control for the steering but you just know that if you boot it mid-corner it's gonna kick out the back wheels brake traction and go sideways which I'm gonna say would be a lot of fun it's just a really good driver and a really good cruiser and this easy three-speed auto means it will just cruise so happily kind of trundle around town go fetching go on errands fetching stuff you, you really couldn't beat it i do feel like right now i need a different hat for sure either a trucker cap or a stetson a burger a rifle and some moonshine i think my day would be complete then i want some denim i need more denim well, I hope you've enjoyed, I was going to say a bit of Americana, but it does not get much more American 
than an American truck from Texas built in an American hot rod shop on an American TV show driving down a damp country lane in England. Okay, that's almost as American as it gets. I hope you've enjoyed this. Personally, I love having an American car on the channel. I'm gonna get a lot more over the summertime because it's a personal favorite thing of mine. So I don't care if you watch it or not, I'm just gonna do it. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please do hit like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to the channel to get those numbers up. Then YouTube say I'm good and they like me and stuff. Please hit the bell notification as well, which is down there on the bottom right hand side of your screen. And then you'll see when new videos come up as well. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera right now. This road's quite narrow and this truck's quite wide. And I'll see you again next time. Ah, wrong, wrong fingers. And I'll see you again next time. That's my Richard Rawlings impression. Yeah! Does he do those fingers or those fingers? I can't remember, he does those fingers.